I bet you. Welcome back, everybody, to Facetious. This is episode 56, recorded on Monday, January 16, 2017, at approximately 6 07 p.m. Central Standard Time. I am one of your hosts, Larry, aka Blue Man Rule, and I am joined as usual by my main Damien, uh, the Cookie Chef Supreme. Uh, we are lower third free in another than Mike, aka Scarfinger, aka Real Talk. What's up, Doc? What's up, everybody? It's your boy Scarfinger. Um, uh, the 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 real talk, aka the Cookie Monster, aka Cookie Bay, aka Cinnamon Bay. Cinnamon um, Bay. <laughs> um, I, I made that up. Uh, I was right. making some cookies, and everybody's talking about Salt Bay. Salt Bay. You know about Salt Bay? No. You know about Salt Bay? Uh. Uh-uh. There's this. Um, I think he's like a Turkish chef or whatever. And it's a video of him um, cutting up, uh, cutting up a, uh, a, a, a some some steak. Hmm. Some and steak. he goes to put some salt on it, and he kind of puts his little puts a little twang on it. Um, <laughs> so, and so everybody been calling him Salt Bay. Um, so Salt Bay, and then and then I was making cookies yesterday because uh, the homie Anthony Allen ordered some cookies. Yeah, word shout, up, word shout, up. Shout out to double A. Um, he no, ordered some cookies. Mm-hmm. And um well see uh, it, um your boy, Samson Simpson, right. uh said uh Cinnamon Bay is hilarious. See, here's the thing. <laughs> I thought I thought Sugar Bay was a little too fruity. So I had yeah, to go Sugar Bay, Simpson. Sugar Bay would have got you it would have been suspect, bro. Like Sugar yeah. Bay, I think that'd have been think, suspect. Yeah, but see, but given my proclivity for uh, bakerations, um, <laughs> bakery. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, I was going in that direction. That that's where I was going with it. So, okay. Okay. so, okay. so that's so that so I was trying to do that, and then you know I usually put at least a little bit of cinnamon in almost all of my cookies. So I just said, you know, I'm gonna go cinnamon bay. Um, so I you, I will yeah, go I just. Bay. I will go coconut bay. No, nah, you can't. You can't do coconut because er, no, yo, for real, I learned something, bro. Uh huh. What you learn? Don't nobody like coconut, dog. Nobody likes coconut. I can't. That's what I was trying to tell you. You thought I was weird. You thought I was weird. I was trying but to told you coconut is not that hotness on these streets. Yo, I love. I love personally. I love making island cookies. I love island cookies. But the moment okay. I say coconut, everybody's like, I'm out. I'm like, well, right. what's wrong with you people? Like, you people. like, And I really mean you people in the way that you, <laughs> you mean people, you huh? people. What right, is wrong right, with you right. people? Um, Look here, man. So, I tried to told you. I tried to tell you, son. Look, that coconut is not what's hot on these streets because the like the actual texture of real coconut, like, okay, it depends. If you're going to get like the, the coconut flakes, like that stuff is nasty. Like I, when I was in Puerto Rico, I had like a real pina colada out of a real coconut shell. That's a different thing. Right, but when you start talking about the, the the coconut flakes and stuff that you get here, now nah, homie, it's not the same. The only the only good thing that, that gets coconut in it is rum. You know what I'm saying? So see that and, and you're you're just explaining why I can't be coconut bay. <laughs> okay, That's okay. I, I got you, I got you, I got you. So I think I've i I've just I'm 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 torn right now because the my original thought and you know the um uh uh bitmoji has the uh the salt bay avatar where you make your avatar do the salt bay thing what? um so I that's that. what i that's what i did and it, and that's when i thought of that's when i thought of cinnamon bay but i'm kind of thinking about cookie bay okay all right i mean it's, it's up to you I'm cookie bay. i mean i mean i mean i mean i mean i mean every day i'm i'm the cookie monster every day Every day. But you know, right. when I'm right. sitting down with my lady, you know what I mean? Was, you know, like I see, can be I can be cinnamon bay or I can be I can be cookie bay. Well see here's my when thing. I'm with my lady. Here's, here's my thing. Saying? Every nickname that I have, like it has to be universally applicable, right? So I'm pretty sure not just my girl is gonna call me that. So you know, whatever you comfortable with dudes calling you is up to you. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not. Yeah, over that's the reason why I couldn't. I ain't. I, I, ain't no. Ain't no dude. Ain't no dude gonna call me no sugar bag. Like that's not how this is gonna work. 
<laughs> but I think at this point, at this point, in my, at this point in my life, if uh-huh. I ever hit, if I hit that gym hard, and I make, and I sculpt myself into right. an, an impressive, uh, an impressive physical specimen, mm-hmm. I think my stripper name will be Cinnamon Spice. I think we should do that. Cinnamon Spice. Hey man, it's up to you, bro. I show up you. I show up on stage with. I show up on some stage with some um some um some cinnamon sticks. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, my my girlfriend is is listening. And she can hear me uh-huh. in the other room, and she keeps sending me messages. Uh, and this this last one I can't really say, but yeah. um, <laughs> but but I think I could you know I could show up on stage and, and you know I I could my stripper outfit is start off like a chef outfit. I show up with some cookies, with some legendary <laughs> snickerdoodles. <laughs> I show up with snickerdoodles, toss them out to the crowd. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Toss, toss doodles to the crowd, and then and we can get this popping. Right, <laughs> you working with them tips, bro? He ain't even playing. He ain't even playing. All right, oh, you silly. Mm-hmm. All right, Mike, I have a full agenda today, bro. So, um, let's bounce okay, around let's, and get. Let's, do it. let's bounce around and get into these. Um, you want to start off light and get heavy, or you want to start off heavy oh, and well, finish well, light? Well, before we get before we get started, I'm gonna say this. All right. Um. Um, I, I found I did listen to the episode of EDG. Mm-hmm. That was some, that was that was some real spit, homie. Um, yeah. We, yeah, we 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 got some awards. Yeah, and that's uh, and you know I already said all of my thank yous and stuff like that. Absolutely. Um. Uh. So I'm so I'm not even uh, you know we we already discussed that. But here's the one thing that I want people to understand. Um. I, I I want y'all next time they have an awards. I need y'all to do an I do this award. Um, okay. named after named after Russell Westbrook, because you know they said, oh, you had all of these points. He was just like, I do this. Um, but I want that <laughs> award for myself because no one understands that I don't prepare for this at all. Right. No, Scar Scar never listens. You do to you do all of the preparing for this. Like the only show that I do where I prepare in advance is Scarcasm, which I just released an episode. Ding. Um, but uh, <laughs> but 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 I I just I turn on the cameras and what happens happens. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hey, look here, look here, y'all. Coming from your boy, you know I ain't ever lied to you. I'm not about to start Scar never looks at the notes and is just ready so everything you hear every week is just him on 10 turned up ready to go he ain't looking at no ready to go so never, uh, all right never dare. every right, day right, every so we this. gotta keep that in mind for next year so that's a note that's a note in the hat the i do this award all right or the westbrook let's call it the westbrook so <clears throat> yeah the westbrook all right so Will just asked in the chat what's going on, Danny Knight, Will and Simpson. They up in the chat. Um, oh, so yeah. Will- um, my man's in them. All right, my man's in them. Ask me about um, the uh, Super Mario. Is is uh, anything right. Nintendo is Nintendo on your agenda? It is, it is. That's why I jumped okay. right to Will. That's why I was shouting out the chat because he put in there, you think Super Mario is gonna have some dope underwater level? And in response, man, to that, no, no, what you don't think so? No. Who cares? I- who cares? The switch is a stupid idea from the very beginning. Okay, let me. Okay, let me preface okay. This. I'm gonna preface this by saying that I've been off the Nintendo train since Super Nintendo. Okay. People who listen to me for a long time, they know that that the reason why um, the reason why I don't mess with Nintendo is because of two games: uh, um, uh, Mortal Kombat and Shaq Fu. Um, so. <laughs> And I completely jumped off the Nintendo train from there. I barely touched, I have barely in my life touched a 64 and I've barely in my life touched a GameCube. I did, I did the Wii because, um, you know, my, my life partner at the time bought a Wii, but I, I barely only played Wii Sports and um, Boom Blocks. Those those are my joints. I played a couple of the I played a couple of the old school games, but the Wii ain't really my thing. I bought a DS to play games with my daughter, but I bought it from somebody because I wasn't giving Nintendo my money. Um, <laughs> so I, Nintendo ain't got nothing from me for for me. Or, you know, from they haven't gotten anything from me for me in a long time, and they keep mm-hmm. selling y'all the same stuff over and over again. Mm-hmm. And this new, this new Mario Brothers looks stupid. Like, 
<laughs> okay, guys. So should we tell people what the Nintendo Switch is first? Because I got all information here. Let's just let's just break it down while you get right, into so it. We, so we're gonna jump ahead on your agenda. Right, right. Well, no, that's fine. I went ahead and I read ahead and re reorganize the agenda. It's all good. So the, the Nintendo Switch is Nintendo's next console. It's gonna be released March 3rd, 2017 for a retail price of $299. Has two bundles. It it comes with two little controllers on the side. So if you're unfamiliar with it, it it's a it's a dockable portable console. So you can you can play it at home in this little dock with a with a with a controller on the side, or you can take it out, um, drop little things on the side called Joy Cons, take it and start playing it on the go. Now it has two bundles where the Joy Cons are neon blue and red, or both of them are just gray. 32 gigs of hard drive space at the beginning, uh, with expandable memory up to 256 uh, gigabytes. Now, one of the games shown off was Mario. It was one of the 11 games that they've shown off so far. So, uh, what we consider. What he's going off about is whether or not that that system is going to appeal to people. And Scar and I have said for quite a long time that we don't see how it can appeal to to a lot of folks. Uh, so, uh, again, I've said it's a wait and see, but for two ninety nine, it's not a bad idea, right? To have a console you can play at home and on the go. Bruh, bruh, bruh. The launch lineup right now consists of five games. Five. Right now they showed eleven, but you're right. You're right. Five, five games. Five games. Now, five. now to to Danny Knight's and, point, and, that's just yeah. the five games for the system, right? They're, now they're gonna have online features now that, that you're gonna have to pay for. Now Nintendo hasn't proven you have to pay for them, but within those online features, they're gonna give away free games each month, like they do on Xbox Live and PSN. And Danny Knight is like, what the hell? <laughs> like I don't understand what's going on. Uh, so it's and and the games aren't from recent generations. They're from the NES or the Super Nintendo. So from the Nintendo Entertainment System or the Super Nintendo Entertainment System era of games. So that's, that's ridiculous. What that's ridiculous. With with PlayStation and Xbox, we actually get indie games, current games sporadically. Mm -hmm. And and those are the main attractions. And additionally, Xbox throws in 360 games. Right, right, right. exactly. And so, to, so you telling me you telling me that you ain't even going back to the oh here you go. <clears throat> All right, all so right. you're not even telling me that you go. Do you not even going back to the last generation? You can't even put a Wii game in this bitch. But you are gonna give me Nintendo games and Super yeah. Nintendo games? I slap the I slap the shit out of somebody that tells me that they want me to pay for this shit. Like, come on, son. I, I say come this. On, I say this. With, this you know what I I'm say saying? this with all sincerity. And um, in in um, Super Mario in New York City. Like, come on, Nintendo man. New, New, New Donk City, because it's Donkey Kong. New Donk City, nigga. It's New York. <laughs> It's, it's New York. <laughs> New Donk. You know, might as well. You might as well have. You might as well have Mario in some Tim's in a fitted, and <laughs> be like, <laughs> and be like, uh, Cooper <laughs> Man Bug and B. You know, like <laughs> it's real. It's real spit, Cooper Man Bug and B. <laughs> hey, so so let me ask a question though. All of that though, what what overall brand is he rocking? Is he rocking? Is he rocking Sean John? Is he rocking Rockaware? Is he doing South Pole? What is Mario rocking if he's doing a fit in? Okay, gym? it all depends. What's the time? What's the time frame? Okay. Because I mean. <laughs> I mean, if, if we gotta take it back to we gotta take it back to the roots. If they gonna be in, they need to have the like the the Nintendo version of some Carnheart. You know what I'm saying? Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. You know, Mario. So he, he got, yeah, so that's right. Hot ninety seven. Mario gotta spit, dog. Mar like he gotta spit. <laughs> he gotta spit something real. He gotta show up. He gotta show up to uh hot um. Was it was what's a number that you would no um hot hot he got to show up to 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 hot sixty four and drop some, four, drop some bars <laughs> he got to drop some he got to drop sixteen bars on, at at hot sixty four at hot okay. sixty four he got to drop sixteen at hot sixty four he got to he got to he got to show up to hot sixty four and drop some bars and mm. I ain't talking about no I ain't talking about no uh we from New York but we rap like we from Atlanta bars I'm talking like. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he. I mean, Mario need to be spitting like sticky fingers, dog. Like that's what I'm talking about. Oh, what? Oh man, I don't know if Mario got it in him, dog. To be honest with you, 
Like, I mean, now it seems like Princess Peach is finally calling his name. And I don't know why she's calling his name because she pretty much been playing him to the left and put him in the friend zone since 1983. Like, I don't even know why. Why? Like, when did he get that serious? Did, did, Mar did Mario go over and did he get... You know, was, was wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait. The S, the the NES and SNES games are extra. They're, they're part of the online that you have to pay for. That's what I'm saying. So it's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah. Y'all see that face, bro? See that face, <laughs> bro? Nintendo mad bugging V. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, son? Like they real, they real, they real. They right. Oh man, I can't even. Come on, son. Right. Come on, son. Now, now here's the thing. Here's the natural, the real impediments for to this for me. Not only now, Digital Foundry. I didn't put it in the chat, but I watched a video of them today, and they reviewed it. And of course, they're loving the fact that it's a mobile platform, and they like the capabilities of it being a handheld. But as a home console, they considered it underwhelming. Yeah, it's going to be underwhelming when you the most you it's get. It's an underwhelming handheld. You only get like two hours on this thing, B. Man, they, yeah, they said two and a half to six hours for Bro, like true, have to, like heavy game. You're going to have to, you can't, even, you probably can't even use your, uh, your, your little battery packs that you use with your phone. Like you're going to have to use a battery book bag that plug into this junk right. or something. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like when you out, like you can't even, yo, for real, like. Do you, do you know how long some people's commute is? Like this thing ain't even yeah. gonna last my whole commute, son. Like no. <laughs> yeah, I wonder about Simpson's commute because Simpson he used to have a decent commute, man. Like he used to have he used to have a, a fairly legitimate commute on public transport, and so uh, you know I don't I don't know if he he'd be out there rocking with Mario on or out there. Imagine him out there with his Nintendo Switch playing Ninja Gaiden from the NES. People gonna look at him like he's crazy, right? Got to, got to. I mean, but Ninja God might be able to slide. But like, if you sitting there playing yeah. some, if you can't be, you can't be on the train with all the rest of them hard ass niggas playing Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not really gonna fly. That's not really gonna fly. That's not, not how this is gonna go. It can't be out there running around with really, Romano. You can't have man. Secret Romano in there. <laughs> it, it, out here with, out here with the see, if you see, it's gonna cause some problems, right? <laughs> because what's the what's the what's the what's the court John? Uh, um, oh, what's the uh, court Phoenix. John? Uh, Phoenix Wright. You can't even play no Phoenix Wright on the train because the moment niggas start talking like like lawyers, they would be like, <laughs> "You the Popo fam? You the Popo fam?" <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Just roll up on this. I keep, I keep, I keep derailing your shit, but this is, no, it's this all is good. All this, this is too, is too funny. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy to me. Uh, just <laughs> Simpson said people with jackets in the S on the train, because you know he out there in Jersey. He out there in dirty Jersey. So, oh, it's pretty hilarious, man. Yeah, can but, you still not pump your own gas in Jersey? I don't. I don't believe so. Simpson, I'm waiting on you to confirm in the chat, bro, because I told him because that's what Elaine Stryker, oh, I'm sorry, Elaine, uh, from uh, some other castle and currently does um, Rad, uh, okay. uh, Radcast. So she she said, and you know, she's from there, and she said that's currently, that's still how it is. Yeah, um, yeah I, I drove up to Massachusetts the first time, and I ain't really know. Like I so I went to get some gas out out the Turnpike at the Jersey yeah. Turnpike. Simpson said no is, gas pumping, which is like the Jersey Turnpike. Like New Jersey ain't that big of a state, but you right. feel like you on the Jersey Turnpike forever. <laughs> um, for, I mean, absolutely forever. And then so we stopped to get some gas, and the dude was like, "No, you ain't got to get out the car." And I'm like, "All right, cool." And then like so he pumped the gas or whatever and just like you know if you if someone serves you i paid the nigga a tip and then i realized after the fact you weren't supposed to do that and he right. ain't say a word he just he took the damn tip yeah he just walked off come on son yeah, yeah. like if it's up to him to report it he gonna actually you think he gonna actually report it come on man he and, he, and, he, and, he, and he rounded the gas up he rounded the gas up on you Ah. Rounded the gas up and took the tip. Like, won't well, nothing wrong with that, bastard. Ah, that's, that's dirty. That's dirty. Dirty. Speaking of dirty, Alabama got beat dirty on the last second of the NCAA championship games. Now look here. Okay. The Big Ten showed up. They did not show up 
during the bowl season at all. I think we had seven teams playing. I think we may have won one game, maybe two. Uh, downright despicable performance. But to see Alabama go down, even when they're favorited, even when they look like they were dominating. You hit the biggest Dougie, didn't you? You was like, my Dougie. My man, Dougie. hey, hey, I was, I was, man, I was sitting there. Hey, I, hey, 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 hey. You, da you dabbed on them niggas, didn't you? Hey, hey, as much as I could, because listen, <laughs> listen, you know, I didn't have, so it was, I think the national championship game was on ESPN. I don't think it was on a regular local because I kept looking for it and I couldn't find it. So I could only listen to it on the radio. So I was listening to it on the radio, so I felt like it was the 50s, right? And I'm mm -hmm. listening to this game, and I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm like, oh, man. And I was so hyped, and I was like, I don't need to get too hyped because I was laying in the bed getting ready to go to sleep because I had to get them go to work the next day. So mm -hmm. I was I was like, all right, I can't get too hyped, but I'm happy, right? I am happy someone else won and opened this whole thing up because now it just looks like college football has a little bit of parody in it, right? Even though Alabama was completely... I mean, they and then Scarborough steam, was still there and broke his leg. The, they steamrolled the season. So, like, at the, if we're talking parody, like, I mean, and, and like, and Ohio State proved that we don't necessarily have the parody we thought we had. True that, because <laughs> we knew, but we knew, I mean, we knew when they didn't get that call in Michigan when they should have that Ohio State wasn't as good as people, as their but rank we, indicated. We didn't think that Ohio State was going to get ran like that. Man, like, they came out there. They got beat like they stole something. Like that they, made the big team look awful. They got they so, got beat like they, they they got beat like they stole something from Grandpa. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like for real. Like they got beat. I mean, like I mean, they got beat like rugs on the clothesline. Like they got right. Beat. It was tough. <laughs> I mean, and that was that was what I tweeted out. Like that was my first thing when I was watching the game. I was like, man. Did, did Ohio State steal something? Because they showed – well, and that was Michigan, too. They started off getting beat, but Michigan's game was awesome. Like, that came down to the last second, man. So, um, yeah, you know, have you have you noticed how much uh, these really big games are coming down to the wire? I mean, like the, the Cowboys game? Y'all nah. still the boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all still the boys? Hey, and I got, look, I got blocked. My sister blocked me yesterday on Facebook because I was making fun of the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's, I, it's, it's, it's so real. It's so I'm real. a Washington fan, so I, I, I am, I'm happy. But here's the thing, though, they deserve it because you remember when Lebatard and Lebatard show last week. I just listened to it where those Cowboys fan were calling in. It was like, we ain't got nothing to be scared of with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. We the Cowboys. You remember all of that? Now look at what happened. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't do all this bragging. That's why I don't do all this, all this showboating and gloating. I'm not about it because it ends up like that most of the time. So, yep. uh, you know, they and talk, like I said, they talk so much at all season long. Absolutely. All season. Even when they lost, they were like, well, we still got the best record and all of this other shit. And I'm, mm -hmm. they just talk so much shit, bruh. And like, the, 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 I've, been, I've, been, I've been sharing memes against the Cowboys all season long. Right. And it just so happens that on the day, the day out, I was I was catching the business from people were talking so much mess about oh y'all hate on the Cowboys but that but that's because your team ain't make it and blah 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 whatever and I'm just like calm down son I don't even have a team I just like making fun of y'all because there's <laughs> there's three teams there's three teams that I absolutely don't like uh huh the skins okay. Right, because you have and, and the Cowboys twice. Man, all NFC East teams. I, I see because, your hate because they're not the first the league. No, I told you. Look, here's the thing. When I first started, <laughs> when I first started watching uh football and I first started caring about what happened in football, um, I started watching football with my friend Rob, who is a Bills fan. And that was the first year <laughs> of those four Super Bowls. And who beat them in those Super Bowls? Dallas. The Giants. Well, yeah, that, yeah. The Skins. Mm -hmm. And the Cowboys twice. That's the right. four Super Bowls. So right. I hate all of them. Um, because because at the time I thought I might end up being a Bills fan because I spent all of my time watching fo football with a Bills fan. But think about it, Mike. Didn't it work out for your advantage? Because the Bills are terrible right now. And they haven't won anything. It's, so it yeah. worked out yes. for well, your benefit. Let's see. Well, I was really, you know what, I, I, I was, a couple of years ago, I really thought about picking a team. 
and I was gonna I was gonna try to pick a team close, but I knew I I wasn't gonna pick the Redskins. I was thinking about the Panthers or mm-hmm. uh, or the Ravens. I was okay. thinking Panthers or Ravens, and then um, um, my ex wife moved to Baltimore and she became uh-huh. a Ravens fan. And then I realized that I can't really do that. Right. Um, so then I was like, well, I might jump on the Panthers, but then they got really good last year. And people were like, oh, y'all bandwagon, y'all yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I can't really jump on now. Like, see, technically right now in this moment, because the Panthers are sorry, I can jump on now and I can declare my love now. And it won't seem so bad because they were sorry this year. Mm-hmm. So here's my, yeah, you can't. So here's my thing. My youngest son, he's in there watching the Cowboys game, and he's a Sooners fan and a Cowboys fan. I, I know I failed as a father, and I feel completely disappointed in that. <laughs> no, but- no, 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 sir. <laughs> I'm going to say this emphatically. <laughs> your people failed you. How <laughs> you ended up on the being a Redskins fan? Uh, your people failed you. No, man. I'm so- going to say, at least, at least, at the very least. The Cowboys are interesting, and I understand why they are a national brand as opposed to some local bullshit like the Skins. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that makes me upset. I'm like, why? I'm like, and he was. He seemed like he was so upset at that loss. I'm like, why are you so upset? You're not even really that big of a fan. He's like, yeah, I am. They're good this year. I'm like, that's being a fair weather fan. That's not how we do football in this house. We're not Mm-mm. fair weather fans. We don't like teams no, just because they're good. You like them when they're good, when they're bad. You like them when they're average. You like your team because you like your team. You don't like them you chose them. your team. You gonna bleed blue, motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't know win or lose, <laughs> win or lose, you gonna bleed blue. <laughs> Mark you says, uh, show you? <laughs> "Yeah, right." <laughs> now, now, Mark says, "Mark says, Skins fan rejoice at a Cowboys loss." Absolutely, we absolutely. I think all of the you NFC, better believe all of the NFC, all of the NFC East teams rejoiced yesterday. Man, I saw I saw Giants fans who ain't been happy about their team all season. They got a little bit of hope when they made it to the playoffs. But they were, I mean, I mean, they were damn near doing cartwheels like yesterday. So right. it was right, man. Those, so I think all the NFC East got happy about that. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. And I know there was there's some sick fans out there, like that just just sick. Just sick. So Let's talk about Superbugs and Nevada since we're talking about folks being sick. Okay. Scar, I don't right. know the next time you plan on going to Vegas, but when you do, be careful when you go. Okay, so. Okay. I, I haven't been. I would like to go. I oh. haven't been. Okay. You know what? You would probably like it for about a day and a half. Uh, the buffets okay. are legit. The walking up and down the street, see the different hotels. It's cool, but it gets old. So. Uh, the yeah, when I thought about going, I thought about going for like a weekend. Like I ain't going for no week. Right. So I went off one of those ninety nine dollar, uh, ninety nine dollar stay for five days type of deal. Right. Go to a go to a uh, a timeshare presentation and get your hotel discounted to ninety nine dollars for the whole time. Okay. So. So I, I went on one of those. Me and my wife, we ended up going. We had a decent time for a while. We didn't stay too long, though, and that's why we really enjoyed it. Um, so we had a good time, but it was just constant construction out there. But nevertheless, so there was a lady out there who um, she, she contracted this bug, and she, her body rejected all 26 different kinds of antibiotics that we have in America. Right. Um, dude. So listen to this. It contained uh, the sample of her blood contained New Delhi metallo beta lactamase or NDM, an enzyme that makes bacteria resistant to many antibiotics. Dog. She she died. Unfortunately, uh, she was she was like a 70 year old lady, but she died, man. She and and it just it just baffles me that we have diseases out here that are like that, that will fight off every antibiotic we have known to man, even um, Colistin or colistin, C O L I S T I N. It's like the most harsh antibiotic, and and doctors and hospitals don't like giving it because the side effects on the human body are really really harsh. But it resisted that too. So, well, they they said this they said this would happen, right? 
Mm-hmm. They said they said eventually that this would happen because they put antibiotics into the Food, the, the, the meat. The chick- yep, the chicken and, uh, and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because instead of like making sure that the animals are uh, fed well and they graze and they all that stuff, they they put they put them in factories. They they make them fat. They give them the antibiotics to keep them from being sick and then they slaughter them right. and they, they they told us that this would happen mm-hmm. um yep but but in in the, the worst part about it is like this is happening at a time where they're gutting obamacare bro right did you see what they're gutting it for though oh it's so great yeah. trump's plan is called yeah. insurance for everyone what is the functional difference if, we, if we're just gonna <laughs> Call it a cement change. Say what? One more time. I say exact amundo. Yeah. So my thing is, of course, I'm pretty sure it's gonna it's gonna function a little bit differently. But the whole idea of what Obamacare was is what you're implementing, even though you criticized it from the high heavens when you were running for when you were running for office. So again, <laughs> he said he's still going to Vegas. You go catch that Zika, bro. Yeah, hey, man. Hey, all right, Simpson. All right, you get on out there, bro. If you're taking your multivitamins, yeah, you're gonna have a problem. I'm telling you, baby. Catch that. He yeah. said he gonna catch the Zika. <laughs> he gonna catch that Zika. Like you go, you gonna go to Vegas and everything's gonna be great until you come back home and your dick ain't gonna work. <laughs> and you start seeing in shades of green, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, man. I, so again, so you're right, man. So and then on top of that, also last year it was this, it's this virus called MCR1, which was found in four people last year, and it was also resistant to that uh, colostin. Uh, antibody. So look, man, and that, that was incurable as well. So it's strange, man, that we have these things out here. And as I've always told my wife, I'm like, look, there are two ways. If, if I was a genuine terrorist, if I was a legitimate terrorist, I would attack people biologically. Like that that would be my thing. I would put stuff in their food supply. I would put stuff in their water supply to weaken their entire nation, to fo- to shift the focus of the country to the health side instead yeah, of the military say, side. You might not want to say too much because, you know, the, the folks, they will right. come see. Right. But all I'm saying is that yeah. I would have, like, this would have been the yeah. thing, yeah. right? Yeah. No, you're saying what you are saying is that's how you can see actual terrorists taking right. advantage of our situation. Exactly. That's we what I was meant to say. We don't believe that we could, we would no. never. Not saying I ever, would ever actually do it. No, no, no. no. Even Absolutely not. think about doing anything of this nature. Correct. Correct. See, see, given. given right. Thank you, NSA, bro. Like, I know, I know you out here listening. I'm and, 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 you know, we just made sure that we clarified that for you. Right. Before before Blue gets that knock on his door, and, uh, <laughs> no, but it, it's it's worrisome, man. It's worrisome because of how we consume, right? It's worrisome because yeah. of how we buy food, how things are packaged, how there's these mass shipments of exposure where these there are areas and times of exposure. It's worrisome, right? Um, yeah, it just, I, mean, it, I mean, a brother can't even get no uh, can't, a brother can't even get no blue bell right now. Right. <laughs> he's still at the blue bell still. He's still concerned about the blue bell. Still concerned I about mean, the blue I bell. I my Millennium Crunch, damn it. Like, <laughs> this <is> a- <laughs> All right. I hear you. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with it, man. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But yeah, so, you know, again, so just, you know, be careful. Simpson, when you go out there, man, make sure you got all your shots. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you got all your shots. <laughs> You're going to have to show up with a body condom. Right. <laughs> Walk around in one of them suits, right? One of them bubbles, one of them anti contaminants. No, no, he gonna walk around with those bubbles that you know, those people when they be playing soccer and stuff, and they had those bubbles that they wear to bump yeah. into each other. He gonna show the Vegas with one of them shit, so right, right, right. <laughs> he, gonna show, he gonna get out, the, he gonna get out the plane, talking about so. <laughs> 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 Everybody got a bed pump. I can use a bed pump to blow this thing up fast. Wow, oh, man. Right, that's all. You got a bed pump? You got a bed, uh, air mattress pump? Anybody, anybody in here got an air mattress pump? Right, right. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so, so, so speaking, so, all right. So, also, Scar, so, no, you've been talking about sicknesses and everything, man. Apparently, what we didn't know, what you and I did not know, is that uh, Bishop Eddie Long, you said it was a thing that kind of like that Luther had, and apparently, you know, it was reported that Luther had cancer. So 
it is confirmed that past that uh Bishop Hedy Long also had cancer. Mm -hmm. So I told I told y'all he had that lupus. You said it. I told I said it from the beginning when he when when those pictures came out of him just drastically shrinking all of a sudden. Yeah. And he and they tried to say that he was eating healthy and all of this other stuff. Eating healthy don't make you drop that fast, bro. But it, eating healthy don't make you lose muscle like that. Like fit, like yeah. lean muscle. It don't make there you is, lose lean muscle like that. There is, there is, there is four things that can do that. Okay. Four. Cocaine, mm -hmm. heroin, <laughs> cocaine, <laughs> heroin, AIDS, <laughs> right, and cancer. That's what. That's what. Those are things that I can think of right now off the top of my head that'll make you shrink that fast. Right, right. So in the cocaine, in the cocaine and the heroin, the only reason why you shrink that fast is because you're not worried about eating. Right, right, right. You could say meth, but I mean there would have been other signs of meth. You know, there would have been other signs. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So yeah. like face scars and shit. Right. Well, just you know, teeth going bad. You know, um, mm -hmm. really, just you know, body care, like mm -hmm. your care and your presentation, just would have just went all the way down the drain. Uh, mm -hmm. So. But yeah, so uh, you know, he took his church from uh, membership from three hundred to twenty five thousand people. Uh, that's a lot of people, bro. Like he he really oh, enhanced. He really I can't enhanced. I, I can't mourn, bro. I can't mourn some someone who was so heinous in right. destroying the lives the, destroying the lives of young men, and then preaching about how homosexuality was wrong. Right, and not even that, but systematic going about it in a systematic way, right? So systematically yeah. doing it over an extended period of time, uh, right? Which and then which, and again, then doing like crazy, doing crazy shit, like reading scripture while he's being blown by a young man. Like that's just weird, man. It's just yeah, weird. Right. Like I like again, again, like I said, you know, we you know we were we were talking to stuff in the chat, and it's not even that. But, you know, even though he took his membership from 300 to 25,000, uh, you know, when we were talking about in the chat, we were talking about, you know, his his ability, like his, you know, false prophet and things like that. Just even though he has 25,000 people in the church. Listen, let me finish. Even though he has 25,000 people in the church, they're not really well equipped. And listening to him preach and listening to his sermons and stuff like they're not well equipped. No. So that doesn't do anyone any good. One can, one can only hope that his successor can actually correct the problems right of of his church mm -hmm. um and and two that at the very least he did something worthy of being redeemed in the eyes of the lord before his passing right right Right, like, because like, I mean, it's 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 supposed to be about forgiveness, and hopefully, he came clean, and you know, and did something worthy of redemption. And I hope that in some way, he did something to help those young men that he harmed so much. Right, absolutely. I mean, they settled out of court with all of that stuff. Uh, all four of the allegations, all four separate civil suits, were settled out of court, and. Of course, you can't really compensate people for that, but maybe it will help them move on with their lives. You know, maybe in some fashion. Uh, but you're right. All we can hope for, you know, we all we can hope for is that someone else who steps in actually leads them in the in the proper direction, and that those people, um, and that those people find some peace. And yeah, uh, Mark, we were talking about Bishop Eddie Long. Um, that's who we were referring to. He used to be a really, really big guy. I think he served some time in prison. Actually, that's how he got so big. But he was a really, really big guy. But um, because uh, I, I, I listened to a couple yo, of his sermons, he used to say that re-release that damn show. It's re this is the time. It. Okay. This is the time. Release that damn show. Put it on the put it on the facetious. Feed. I, I would throw it on the feed tonight. Um, it, it was from PYP four or five. I think it's Faith or Forgiveness, where we first discussed uh, Bishop Eddie Long. So I will re-release the feed again. And I, I, I will it really seems, release the show on the feed tonight. It seems to be so many people's favorites still. Right, right. Um, but so, you know, because because we went in. Right, we did, we did, we really went into that. So, uh, all right, man. So I got one other thing. Actually, I got two other things. Um, so, so Scar, let's just talk about this because Simpson told me about this, and I want to get your take on it. And then I got one other thing that we're gonna wrap up with. Um, 
we're gonna talk about Shot Town Simpsons Simpsons home uh home hometown. So listen. So have you ever been to a place where the food just really ain't right? And 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 so listen. So Simpson was telling me he went to a place in Philly called the Little Lion, right? He went to this place in Philly called the Little Lion. They were talking up their fried chicken, right? Simpson was like, all right, that's cool. And his mom could cook, number one. I stayed with him when I went to Chicago a couple of times. His mom can get out, right? So the, so the brother know fried chicken. He came down to my place and eat fried, ate fried chicken, ate some of my frat brother's David's fried chicken. We'll have to go into the story about that at another time because how you going to put dirty plates under your bed? But we'll get into that later. Uh, so... So he went to this place. He went to this place. What up, Casual Terror? Appreciate you dropping in. He went to this place. He said that well, this is what they did. They baked the chicken, left the skin on. And so they baked the chicken, left the skin on. Then they flash fried the flash fried the chicken. And Simpson said he ate it. And he said it just was not right. But he's like, I guess northerners don't really know how fried chicken is supposed to go down. So right. so so for you, have you ever just been to a spot that's been like, yeah, they got the best blank here or whatever, and you tried, you'd be like, man, that's bagged, or you know what I mean? Okay, so I, uh, I, I a few years ago, I had I had lunch with a with a former coworker, uh huh, and I was I was out of my area, and uh, she told me that this place had like the best food. All right. And it was, it was an Italian joint. And she was like, hey, you know, I've been here many times. This place has the best food. And so we went, all right. You know, me, you know, me and a few other people, we all went. And, um, so, I, so I, I ordered some spaghetti cause I ain't really, you know, it was one of those kind of more official Italian joints. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, it so wasn't like Italian olive oil on the menu. Yeah. 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 You got Yeah. 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 Okay. It had those, it had those, it had those words up there that you, that you just like, okay, <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> so, so I just ordered some spaghetti. I was like, give me some spaghetti with some meat sauce. I'll be all right. That's your problem right there. Man, go ahead. Man, let me tell you, um, the meat in the meat sauce tastes like what I what I would believe that dog food tastes like. What? Seriously? Yeah. It wasn't good at all. Oh, dog. Dang. At all. At all. It just wasn't good at all. It was just, oh, it was just, it, the, the meat just ain't taste right. Like, this supposed to be, this, this beef? Like really, like that's that was my thinking. Like this beef, really, this beef for real, for real. It's, right it's not, it's this. not beef substitute. This, <laughs> this thing right here, man, right down here. No, 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 no. Look at me. This <laughs> is beef. <laughs> this right here. <laughs> hey, hey, this uh, is what happened. This is, all right. Yeah. So that, so that happened. That happened to me. That happened to me for real, for real. No, I hate that. I hate that. So this is what happened to me here. So we have this place here in Oklahoma City called Johnny's Charcoal Broiler, right? So they make really they make pretty decent burgers, and they make some homemade. Um, they make like chicken fried steak and stuff like that, and they make some salads, and it's it's pretty pretty decent food. But I went in there, the first time we went in there. I got a burger. Well, you know me. Bruh, I, I just food. remember. I just remember how that thing tastes. I feel like I need to go garble. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You got some flavor in your in your in your vape right there, man. But listen, yeah. listen. So I went in, bro, and the burger was okay. It was a chicken sandwich. Actually, it was good. It was mm -hmm. it was fine. They had fries. <laughs> listen, listen, Scar. Have you ever had fries that you can only describe as sad? Like these fries. <laughs> these fries were like bent over and they were like oily and they were bland, right? <laughs> like they looked like they had seasoning salt on them, but they were just they were just teary, they were teary fries, dog. Like that's what it was. That's what happened. They were the worst fries ever. And I and I and so here's here's how my oldest son was. He was really young at the time. So I would tell him my opinions on food and I, I always had to be restrained because he would I didn't want to I didn't want to override his own opinions, right? And his own his own observations. But I had to tell him, I'm like, he's like, what do you think of the fries, Daddy? He's like, I like the fries. I'm like, Son, I can't even lie to you. 
<laughs> these are the worst fries I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like these are absolutely terrible, man. And um, they yeah. they they improve them a little later, so they're not as sad, right? They're just more humble fries now. Like they're just they're they're like they're a little bit more firm, but they they look like they have nice flavor on them. They look like they're nice and brown. We'll see, but it's just nothing. It's just nothing, bro. I'm gonna tell you, it's not a restaurant. But uh, uh, <laughs> shout, out, shout out to the homie Big Joe. Uh, his wife right. Kathy uh, posted something a little while ago, and she said um, she tried a new dish uh-huh. for the fam. Okay. Um, and she said <laughs> that one of her sons described it. I'm quoting here because I don't have I don't have the exact words. Um, that it tasted like. Uh, dead red off the streets of new york <laughs> um and uh I, I i believe on some level she agreed and she agreed never to make that up never again oh no it is yeah oh yeah she said all right here's here it goes from january the third okay <laughs> she said i made a new chicken meal for dinner griffin <laughs> said it tasted like rat on the streets of new york city I guess I get. I guess no need to repeat that meal. LOL. It was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, do is it the like you have to like I don't know my wife because she she tries that new stuff all the time and, we, and she wants us to be honest. So when we are honest, I feel bad, but she's like, well, just the recipe. You know, is it? Is, do you end up blaming yourself as the chef, as the preparer? Or do you end up blaming the recipe? Yeah, well, well, times- no, it all depends. It all depends because me. Um, as a as a uh, quote unquote self proclaimed pastry chef, uh-huh. um, if I try a recipe, I try it the way that it's supposed to, that they tell that they right. tell me to the first time. And I, I do the first time. Mm-hmm. So if it don't come out right the first time, then that's 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 shame on you. Mm-hmm. But once I tried the first time, I kind of figure out ways to kind of freak it a little bit. Mm-hmm. So if I tried the second time and it still don't come right, then mm-hmm. that's shame on me. And, and you, got, you, gotta, you gotta blame me for it. Because if it tastes like rats off the street of New York the second time, <laughs> then that's my fault. Right, right. You wonder if you need a little allspice or some time, right? Right. You like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but no, man, it's, it's just crazy. I've been there, I've been there, man. I've been there. Uh, it's funny. All right, so now, yeah, man. So I will try my best as the photo for this uh, actual episode, I will try my best to go to the website to get the picture of those fries that I'm talking about and use it as a photo art. I gotta go get it. I've gotta go get it. <laughs> so there we go. All right. So Scott, we only got a few minutes to talk about this, man. So, all right. I told you when I put it in the chat that we were gonna talk about it this week. All right. So. Everybody, you know, Scar and I have been saying for years, well, well, for, for years since we've known each other, and we've been saying for a while that um, the, the relationship between African Americans and the police is, is a tenuous one, but that is not without any merit. And this report that we're getting ready to talk about is getting ready to show you. And you know why it's making national attention? Well, because data. Because it's data. <laughs> but it's but see here's the problem with data. Uh huh. Data requires math, and right. Americans are not fans of math. Right. This isn't really a lot of math. This is more of it was quantifiable. But we're gonna go over the qualitative information on all the supporting documentation that came out from it. Okay. So it'll be it'll be awesome. Okay. So everybody listening, I want y'all to understand. Actually, let me get let me get this in here. All right. So according to the Justice Department, okay, according to the Justice Department, um, it says that excessive force was rampantly, rampantly used, rarely challenged and chiefly aimed at African-Americans and Latinos. Now, this report that was released on last Friday um, just said that after a 13 month investigation, 13 months, a little over a year. Okay, now that's a long enough time for it to be relevant and a long enough time for all the information in there to not be anecdotal for a trend to occur. 
So <clears throat> listen, listen to what they had. Okay, 13-month investigation. The report that came out was 161 pages. And what it said that there was a lot of unchecked aggression uh, against people like tasing an unarmed, naked 65-year-old lady with mental issues, things like that. And then, and then after they use excessive force, the supervisors rarely ever questioned it. Um, nothing really, uh, really warranted any further investigation. And again, it was disproportionate toward African Americans and Latinos. So again, now this is just a report that's been thirteen year that th thirteen months. And I've been telling everyone, you know, I'm thirty six since when, since I was driving twenty years ago. This issue was happening where I grew up, and I know many other people from many other areas of the country that it happened where they grew up. So the point. I guess that we've been trying to make is is that there has there there has always been disproportionate treatment and for people to continually say well no it hasn't we get we get we're getting more and more proof right we got proof in new york that stop and frisk was disproportionate and that further it didn't really work and guess what we had the data to support that and and not even we just the data existed to support that so again the thing is, Chicago's been trying. <laughs> they say they've been, they've been trying to make amends and try to do some things to to, to 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 change things around. But this has been their bloodiest year in 20 years out in Chicago. Like just the amount of 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 death and murder that's been going on in in that city has been, I would say, incalculable. But that would be wrong because they've actually been able to quantify it. Like it's just hard for us to really fathom. So. Man, and Casual Terry, you're right, man. Um, data requires money, and somebody from paying for that data may or may not pay more for it to say something that backs up their stance. That is the that is the the hazard of data. But I could tell you from my experience and from the experience of other people I know that like this data, and and like I said, this is the Justice Department's data, right? So this isn't like this is this is an entity that should be unbiased this is an entity that should want to see things as they are so and if they're influenced by money then there's corruption somewhere in that system because again you're talking about an agency so you're talking about a a government entity so again i would say look man look at the reports read the reports but like I said, for people to, to believe that, no, it doesn't happen. And all you got to do is just, you know, sit there and be cool. And man, it doesn't always work that way because you don't know what predispositions and biases get brought into those interactions and those conversations. Sorry, Mike, go ahead. I kind of hogged the floor. Go ahead, bro. No, no, you got it. Cause I, I'm, I don't have much to say except duh, <laughs> duh. Like, you know, like, you know, these, the, the, the here's the, here's the biggest problem with it. Uh, and why this is a problem and it's going to continue mm -hmm. is because uh, the news is all about making um, making people afraid of black people. Well, yeah. And and, and, then, they, and then and then and then when when the cops really started ramping up killing black people, then they created the war on cops. And they created, mm -hmm. you know, the you know they created the Blue Lives Matter and all of this other stuff and you right. know uh, all of this stuff that started in in fifteen and continued through sixteen. I recently saw an article, or it was a picture, mm -hmm. and it was a picture of every person who has killed a cop in twenty sixteen. Mm. There is not one black person in that picture at all. Hmm. Not one. Think it's fully inclusive. But, like, but, but no, no. They said they said you know they have the the data to back mm -hmm. it up. Like, okay. Other people mug shots killed, and stuff. Yeah, mug shots because you know these are the people who killed cops in 2016, and mm -hmm. there was not one. But we are constantly, constantly, constantly fed the notion that we are the dangerous ones. And that's the reason why stuff like this happens. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, stuff like this happens because of the, the, you know, the label that you placed on us, even to the point to where it's like there was a there was a young girl who was. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, uh, she was she was a kingpin. Mm. 
on her on her college campus. She had a, she had a team, um, and they sold a lot, a lot, a lot of drugs. Um, and what they found was um, they were they were all white. Um, and because of the fact that the cops were looking for someone, the, the cops were looking for the black people. Right. They never got them. <laughs> they never, they were never bothered. They walked right past the cops in the, in the campus cops and all of these people. Um, and what makes it worse is this girl knew all of this stuff because of course she was the daughter of a dea agent right wow and she knew she knew that nobody was looking at her and her people because none of them were black right right <laughs> exactly and and, and and because of how we feel and I, I just screen shared the picture of the of the girl in the in, in one of the articles but she was a kingpin on her college campus because the cops weren't looking for them wow. and the cops weren't looking at them and they passed by what you know a lot of times they would pass by cops and stuff like that drugs in hand but the cops were looking for the black people so right didn't matter it wow. didn't matter wow and that's that's amazing man i mean it, it is it is a commentary and you know, I do hope I do hope this you know wakes some people up. So they say, hmm, okay, well, you know, Justice Department found that based on the evidence that they have, based on all of the reports that they have, based on all the filed stuff, all of the um, investigations, like they found that hey, yeah, this this does this does exist. This does exist. Yeah. And my my like, <laughs> it's it's interesting to see because you know Chicago's trying to get in under. They want they actually rushed to get this. They actually wanted to get this released during Obama's presidency because they feared that when Trump takes over on the twentieth that they wouldn't be able to get it out. They wouldn't be able to get this report published, and they wanted to get it out. And I'm glad they got it out. Now I hope it helps. Right now I hope it helps. And. If it doesn't, then I might be like Simpson. So the next time I go to Vegas, I'll stay in Trump Tower and walk around half naked with a Black Lives Matter T-shirt on, because <laughs> that's what Simpson said he, he does when he goes to Vegas. But um, that doesn't seem like a good idea, brother. Right, um, right, right, right. So um, you, I, this, I mean, them good old boys go to Vegas too. Right, but like I said, you know, Simpson is from Chicago, so. You know, we, we from, live. He's, live from, from he's from he's from he's from Chicago, which means he's more likely to harm someone else black than them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ah, bogus, bogus. That's I mean, the South Side at the at the podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, and I mean, all of this stuff. I mean, nothing you said was unusual nothing you said was shocking right. nothing you said was um in Relevant. any way in any way new like right. none of none of what you said was new um with the exception of it's not new to us because it's the life that we live right um what 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 really matters is the fact that somebody did the work so that they can see it mm -hmm. and what they what they do after that is you know what you do after that is what matters but it's been proven with the fact that we're gonna have president trump um this week um mm -hmm. that you still don't care <laughs> like you still don't care like right. and no matter what like you can have all of this data in front of you and you can have all of this stuff in front of you and you are going to still resist information we, right. live in a, we live in an information age, but people are less informed about everything. Um, right. And, right. It, and it's not it is not just about it's not just about fake news and all of this kind of stuff. It's about what you choose to pay attention to and what you choose to believe. And right. if you choose to believe if you choose because it's a choice, look, make no mistake, it's a choice. If you choose to believe that this stuff doesn't matter and that the, the what your preconceived notion 
supersedes information, mm-hmm. then then none of this is going to change. Right. Um, whether the, the whether it was going to be whether it was going whether it was going to be President Trump or um, you know uh, uh, Secretary Alt Clinton, um, like it it didn't matter uh, who who is in charge as long as the people keep resisting the information. Right. Um, which you know here's the thing. All right. Here's the thing. And let's 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 rock this out on a good note. Um, I love the fact that um, when when Barack Obama won, we got the song "My President Is Black." Right? Mm-hmm. That was that was just a cool thing to do, right? <laughs> right. We're not we're not gonna get a Trump song. Do we need because <laughs> because nothing rhymes with orange? My president is orange. <laughs> you can't rhyme that. <laughs> orange only rounds with orange. That's pretty much it, man. Um, exactly. We can't get a song. We can't get a song like "My President Is Black" because nothing rhymes with orange. Um, and <laughs> uh, I think about the. I can't remember which skit it was. I was watching one, and someone just kept every time I think of him now. Like they hold up the little, um, you know, they hold up the little, the little trolls. You remember the little trolls with the hair? Uh-huh. And they have an orange one with a suit on every time from now on. Like, that's that's my mental image. I don't know why. I can't remember which skit done it, but it's just my mental image now. So, uh. all right, let me, t- I'm, I'm going to tell I'm going to say one more thing. Um, I went to a restaurant with my girlfriend the other day. Mm-hmm. And um, I was the only black person there. <laughs> um, been there, been there. Um, and this, it, you, you can't imagine how distressing it is. And I, I walked in the door and I was getting the dirtiest of looks because, of course, also on top of the fact that I am a large black man, uh, my girlfriend is white. Uh-huh. So I was getting this one lady, this one lady looked like she damn near was about to spit up her food and just walk the <laughs> fuck out the door. <laughs> I'm like, done here. Seriously. I'm done here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am never coming back to this place. She would take her napkin and throw it down. And like it was just, it was a terrible feeling. And then one, you want to know what made the feeling worse? What was that? While I was while during, over the course of being there, like other black people came in, mm. but they all got takeout. And one of the dudes kind of circled around and didn't come back the way that he came in. He came past me. Mm. And he gave me a look like, you sitting down here? You braver than me, dog. Brave, and we, brave. <laughs> like we, we gave each other, what's up, son? Like, we gave each other that, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the revolution nod. Um, because, you know, I know that if a revolution broke off in that, um, that place, I was out of here. But right. he gave me the revolution nod. And he gave me that look like, um, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in that moment, in a restaurant, with a, it wasn't a whole lot of people in there, but it was a lot of people in there. Uh, and I'm sitting there with my girlfriend, who I love more than, uh, uh, more than all except a couple things on this earth, like my daughter, of course. Mm-hmm. But um, I never felt so alone for like the first uh <laughs> 30 minutes of being in that place. I never felt so alone in my life. Like I was, I was just sitting there and I, I ended up, I ended up like just sitting there quiet. I, I could, I just couldn't say anything because I'm kind of glancing at these people trying to pretend like they weren't me mugging me. I had to pull out my phone. I had to pull out my phone and I sent her a text message like, yo, they looking at me kind of crazy right now. Next time, this is what you do. This is what you do next time. Take it from me. Take out that butter knife that's in your uh that's you know in your little napkins and you know in your silverware yeah. napkin and uh just work it. Like take it out, flip it around your fingers, let them know that you're good with the knives, and uh they back it off. No, they back it off. Let I'm them good. know you're good Trump. with the knife. This is tr- this is Trump's America. <laughs> This is Trump's America, <laughs> and I am not about to put myself in more danger than I need to be. Now, bro, uh, I'm like, telling you, look, two things people don't want to mess with, sick people and crazy people, which one you going to be? 
But Which one you all of be? them, all of them in that restaurant, with the exception of my girlfriend, had two things: plausible deniability. Like there is. <laughs> What the heck, two words though? That's all good though. Like, all good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, no, we ain't see nothing. Like, right. right. You know, so no, I ain't putting myself at risk, but I, it, it was just, ooh, it was just not, it was, it was not a good feeling. Like, after a while and after the food started being delivered, which the food was made like really fast. Mm-hmm. Like, I probably, I, want to get you out of there. probably want to get you out of there. Yeah, uh, but the food was made really fast, and the food was actually pretty decent. Like, I, it wasn't, it wasn't as good as some of the places that I know for certain back home. But, right. um, but the food was actually pretty decent. But I, but for the first like thirty minutes of being there, I had never felt so alone in my life. Man, man, I hey. shout, shout out to the homie laid back man. Laid, yeah, laid back, back is in the building. Hey yo, check out laid back's mix cast mm-hmm. because. I listened to his last one. I think it might be his next to last one now because I think he might. But to 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 talk about how good laid back has gotten at DJing mm-hmm. from from his beginnings of you know making the you know if, anybody who doesn't know laid back made um, the majority of the music for Scarcasm. Um, and from like starting, you know, downloading the DJ program on his iPod, mm-hmm. on his iPod Touch, and yeah. working his way up. Right. Like the the last mix that he came out with was slamming, bro. Like it was slamming. Nice. And and I I enjoyed that shit immensely. Uh, and you know, I'm not most of the time I listen to podcasts. I don't even really listen to a whole lot of music. I listen to that whole thing straight, B. Nice and 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 I rarely I rarely do I rarely do that but man that's it was just really good and he and he got some stuff in there bro I need like, to get up has, in there and, and I need to get back up in there because sometimes when I'm listening to podcasts I want to switch over to music and then I don't want to I don't really want to stream from I'm no, Heart no, of Pandora I'm, so I'm I'm just gonna add them to my podcast so then I got to download gonna tell, it I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell, tell you why you should I'm, I'm gonna tell you why you should download it because uh, some of his previous mixes are high beats per minute. Oh, okay. And it helps you out on your workouts. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll be good. That'll be good. That'll definitely help, man. Uh, Cause I got workouts tomorrow evening. So, but yeah, man. I love the so, oh man, I, I think that's been a pretty good show. I think that's been a pretty. Good oh, show. how's your um, how's your uh, how's your diet going? My fast or your your diet? Look, I lost five pounds you, on the fast. You ate some. You 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 ate some. You were supposed to. That I was did. That. I did. I did. <laughs> I told him in church yesterday too. I was like, "Look here, man, your boy ain't getting full. I lost five pounds so far, but I ain't getting full, man. So um, I'm gonna have to figure out something. And and the thing is, so me and my wife are supposed to do the fast, right? And I'm not trying to pass off blame, but she ain't make it past Tuesday. That's all your boy is saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'm just saying, bro. So I'm still trying. Like I, said, I have lost five pounds. Started 223, 218. Still working my way down. So but I think I'm thinking about I'm thinking about like trying to jump into some stinking uh doing doing a CrossFit class up here because they have like a a, a a trial class and they have modifications for your knees. So I'm gonna go in okay. with some modifications and uh, and see what's up uh, because a couple of my coworkers actually work out with, at the same under the same CrossFit gym just at a different location. So I am gonna give it a shot. More than likely, and see what's up. And they, if they have some Groupons, then I'm, I'm gonna probably hit it up and see what's up. It's either that or martial arts. So, cause don't I gotta give a little don't, don't let them, don't let them mess you up, bro. Cause that CrossFit. Man. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's I'm not, I'm not doing anything on competition style. I just want to drop. Cause there's a guy at work, and I remember when he started, and he looks like he's dropped, and he said he dropped thirty pounds, and he looks like it. Like I remember when he started, and he is way different from when he started. So, um, I wanna, I wanna get there. If I can drop thirty. Oh, let me tell you, if I could drop thirty scar, yeah, so I'll probably be dunking again. So I, I, I dropped thirty from from earlier this year. I've, I've dropped thirty. Well, early, I mean, earlier last year. Okay, okay, yeah, man. So I, I'm looking forward to that. But everybody, we've kept you way too long. Look, we appreciate mm-hmm. you stopping in, checking us out here on Facetious. Look. Come back again next week. Um, I'll be back there with my new Michigan throw in the background. Y'all see that? Bruh, Y'all see that? Right I got there? I, I got my rock band adapter, so I can use my old guitars. It's about to be on, son. Right. It's about to be on. Right, right. But that throw, 
thirty dollars. Oh, nobody care about that. Nobody care about that shit. They lost. Oh, here you go, hating, hating. You see this? This is what I face every time I'm playing Diablo. I come in there with my demon hunter, bringing heat. Scar, scar hating. But thanks everybody so much for watching and listening. Look, uh, Mark, laid back, Simpson, Will, Casual Terror, and I feel like I'm missing one more. Danny Knight. Danny Knight was up in here as well. Look, thank y'all for watching and listening. We'll be back in your ear in front of your eyeballs again next week to talk about and something else crazy. And, and oh, yeah, quick shout out to, uh, of course, shout out to all the Warriors, but shout out to the homie Neep J because the mentioning of the cookies on EDG is what, uh, what, what made a couple people come look my way. So that's what's up. Hey, man, that's what's up. That's what we do this, man. We, we, we do life together. Also, shout out to Detroit Slasher. You know, I talked about last week, we talked about the, uh, the Kia Stinger. Uh, at the Detroit Auto Show, you know, he lives in Detroit. He actually went to the Auto Show, recorded a couple of videos of that car for me in person. It looks even better in person, man. So uh, shout outs to him. Shout outs to Knox, Rasta, because he was always on the uh, Bishop Eddie Long happening. So he always let me know what was going down. Uh, Los um, from Future Monkeys uh, and, of course, Simpson and, and everybody else. But y'all, thanks. We'll be back again next week. Peace out to the Warriors. Peace out to